<laughs> you tired? I just sitting there, so I was tired. We're keeping you up. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to Keto Rewind. You're what? What's up, guys? I'm Deb. Welcome to Keto Rewind. I'm Jess, and here's Mom. And what's your name? Deb. <laughs> we, Noni. Noni. <laughs> hey, uh, you. Hey, you. I'm hungry. Hey, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we are making uh, a full day of eating keto. But instead of focusing on filming lunch, it's pretty basic. Usually it's eggs and sausage or eggs and bacon. We're going to keep the videos a little shorter, and I'll just provide the recipe for that. And we're just going to make dinners more fun. Is that because I talk too much? She does talk a lot. <laughs> You're long-winded. <laughs> but anyways, we are going to kick off today with General Chow's chicken balls. <laughs> General Chow's chicken balls. Now, this is a great recipe because back in my obese days, I loved General Chow chicken. Absolutely oh, loved it with the sure. crunchy outside. Yes. Well, this is a great keto, low-carb alternative. So we're going to do that today. Um, so basically, what we have here, we have rice, we're going to make a sauce, we're going to make the meatball, and then on the side, we're going to do some roasted broccoli. So it's going to be delicious. So anyways, I'm going to flip the camera angle around so we can see, uh, have a better view, and we'll get started. Okay, so we're going to start off, we're going to double this recipe. This recipe came from I Breathe, I'm Hungry, so I'll link it below. Um, but we're going to start off with two pounds, because we're going to double the recipe. Um, two pounds of ground chicken. I did ground chicken and ground chicken breast. Um, this way, it's a good combination of fats. Um, moisture. There's a lot of moisture and flavor. Yeah. And you could use turkey, um, but I just like chicken because we're doing general... If you see the noise in the back. <laughs> I'm beating uh, I, I like ground chicken, so... Uh, I'm sorry. I like chicken because general chows generally will have uh, chicken, so that's why we're doing it this way. But you're going to need... Can I say hi? <laughs> I've used this recipe, I first found it like two years ago when we were watching um, the Super Bowl. This was like awesome because I just put it on a, in a bowl on the table and everybody already came by with like um, toothpicks. <laughs> it was like a really good Super Bowl. Uh, easy. Oh, it's been Super Bowls coming up. Right, so, <laughs> so you can use that because it's like a lot, it packs a lot of flavor. All right, so we have, you're going to scramble or beat the eggs in, in the mixture here. We're going to do the meatballs first, obviously. And then while she pours that in there, <laughs> I've diced up some green scallions. So half of this is going to go in the sauce and half is going to go in our meatballs. Perfect. Perfect. And then we're, next we're going to need, um, I, I wanted to do garlic, minced garlic, but the, the recipe calls for garlic powder. Um, you do you, but I want minced, I want garlic, minced garlic in there. So I'm just going to do... Be healthy. Give it a good one. <laughs> we're Italian. We're not I afraid of garlic. I promise you'll all have bad breath in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then next we're going to do a half cup of almond flour. So, and then we need some minced ginger. How much? Two tablespoons minced ginger. Um, because this is ground, we're, we're gonna do one teaspoon. Okay, what's next? No, keep going. <laughs> Stir that up. I'm gonna you want in. me to use my I'm hands? I'm gonna get in here with my hands eventually, okay. so don't worry about that. Because I was worried about that. No, I'm not, afraid to, I'm not afraid to touch anything. <laughs> All right, so that is all that's in the meatballs. Um, and then you can bake these for a lighter option, but the part that I liked about the general, the original recipe is fried. Right. So we're going to fry them up in some coconut oil in the pan. So you pick which, which one will fit better in your macros. <laughs> and how many does this make? This will make 32 meatballs. So we need a little, where's that one spoon? Here, use this little spoon to roll it up in. Mm -hmm. Our oven's preheated because I'm going to start dicing up our broccoli while this is being put together. 
So we're looking at a, probably about an inch size meatball yeah. in diameter. And you know, I'll be honest with you, I've made these several times. They're nice in, in a meatball, but I like a lot of that crispy so that when you bite into the crispy and you get to the soft center. So I've been known to actually make these you know, you get them going on one side and you kind of smash them down so they almost look like a sausage a patty. patty. And you know what? In, in, the, in the whole thing, it, the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter yeah. that much. But I, the reason I like the, the patty thing is because I get the crunch and the crisp. And I, I like that. They might cook a little even, more evenly. Yeah, little I really quicker. like that. So we're going to go ahead and make up all these meatballs and we'll meet you right back here in a minute. Okay, so while we're making the meatloafs, we'll pan over and take a look at the progress here. Um, the meatballs, I should say. Um, those are coming along, and I'm going to go ahead and put the broccoli in the oven. So we're not doing any other sides, so we're having extra broccoli tonight. So get your total weight, and then add your oil to it, and roast it in the oven. So I'm just going to lightly drizzle based off of the serving sizes here. Hey, remember, count. Count, count, count. It makes all the difference in the world because it's easy to go over with fat. So fat's not bad, <laughs> but you don't want to eat too much. It's easy to overdo it. And I like to use my two tablespoon. So I'm aiming for roughly like two tablespoons per person. And that is it. So I'm going to grab the salt and pepper and put that next. And these are going to roast in the oven at 400 degrees while we cook up the meatballs. And this is pink salt, by the way. And then some pepper. Black pepper. And it's so easy. And it goes really well with the sauce, the general sauce. And don't forget, use those hands. Make those food police upset. <laughs> Touch your own food <laughs> in our, our non-gourmet kitchen here. We get a lot of comments on that stuff, but you know what? Good grief, we're clean. <laughs> Haters are gonna hate, so yeah. might as well give them something to watch. That's right. And that is it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in the oven, and we'll meet you back here when it's time to start cooking those meatballs. Okay, so we have the meatballs ready to cook. And next thing, we're gonna dice up a chili. Um, we tried to get them already uh, dried and everything, but we couldn't find any, so we're gonna do raw. I usually actually get them in Mexico every year. I travel to Mexico to get um, some things that we normally eat, like um, we use the, what is that, the vanilla extract. <laughs> Their vanilla extract is the best in the world. So I get my vanilla extract with them. I get all lots my dried, peppers. lots of dried peppers from dried Chile, all the Chile peppers, the ancho chiles, the, uh, right all the way to the habanero, habaneros. This one is actually a fresco. It's the best I could find here at Sprouts. It's very, it's, it's low for us because we like a good bite. So, um, but it's spicy enough where I wouldn't put it in with the kids. I'll make this and add this at the end. Yeah, for the kids. We won't <laughs> add this to the uh, to the kids. Yeah, if kids are eating it. I would. Although this. they like spicy food, they like, they they're just they're spicy. certainly not at our level. <laughs> you know, so uh, we'll just get these. And plus, these are fresh. Usually, the dried ones do pack a little more punch. And I won't do this now. But normally, if I'm when I'm on my own and we have our dried Mexican chile peppers. I will take a little oh. bit of it. Oh, look who's in. You must be hungry again. It's smelling good already. <laughs> I could probably get a couple meatballs down if you got them ready. <laughs> Hi, everybody. And, of course, the noise in the background She's is the hungry, hungry dog. <laughs> She's just starved to death. We have to, to death. that tumor. <laughs> she also has cancer. <laughs> well, she doesn't want to leave us yet. We're fun. <laughs> Okay, so that's about enough for the four of us. Um, you know, it's probably maybe two tablespoons of the uh, fresh pepper. Um, if this was a hot um, chili pepper that I use, this, uh, uh, that I use, the pepper would be uh, a very small, maybe one and a half inches, and that would be enough for the entire batch. 
because that pepper um, certainly packs a lot of heat. Yeah. I have it on my bus in my cupboard, but I didn't, I forgot to bring it. But this is a good substitute. This is a nice flavor uh, pepper. Always when you use cutting peppers that are hot, use a glove. always use a glove. <laughs> I even have at home, I have goggles. Um, I also have goggles for when I fry bacon and stuff like that. I, I have a lot of eye issues. So I don't want any of that hot stuff going in my eyes. So you want to protect your eyes and your hands. So do yourself a favor with hot peppers. Always keep your gloves on hand and safety <laughs> goggles. All right, next we're going to make the marinade. So first we're going to start off with sesame oil. I'll get the next ingredient for you. I'll, I'll even open the bottle for you since it's got the child locked on it. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, what do you say? I'm not that old yet. <laughs> All right. Next, we need three of these of rice wine vinegar. Wait. Yeah, three of those. Five and mm -hmm. six yeah. tablespoons. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh-huh. And then the same with the coconut aminos. Look who's back again, Mr. Hungry. <laughs> and the dogs. That's the noise you're hearing. <laughs> Coley! The kitchen's a happening place in our house. <laughs> she has a slight to her head tilt still, but she's much better. Apparently she's going to probably always have this head tilt. You can see it from the back. <laughs> she's tilting to the right. <laughs> Coley! It just makes her cute. <laughs> Two, four, and six. And the next one we need water. So that's going to be about a half a cup. Uh-huh. How did I know that? <laughs> And we need three more of those. We're good for the sugar substitute, I'm going to use brown sugar. Um, it, I think it would give it a rich sauce flavor. Three tablespoons? So three tablespoons. Or I should say six tablespoons. Okay. One minute while the dog's drinking. <laughs> Two, three, four, five. So next thing, we're gonna move that to a pan and we're going to bring it to a gentle boil. Now the, the xanthan acts as your thickener. Where so in the you old whisk, days- You wanna whisk while you put it in. Yeah, and while in the old days you would put, um, you would use your flour or your uh, cornstarch. Bad, bad, bad. Your xanthan gum now does that job for you. And you can always add more if you want it. Some people like a really thick sauce and some don't. So just keep it moving. Turn the heat up. Just half of those scallions go in. I like to put some on the top for um, garnish. Yes, perfect. Touch them. <laughs> Food rebel. please. I'm a rebel. Food please. Now, can you see that that's already thickening? And I'm not even yet up to a boil. Oh, and the smell, it's fabulous. All right, this is what we want to go for. You see the um, how thick that is right now? Nice, nice thick sauce. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I'm gonna re reduce it to low. And just put the cover on the until cover everything on. else is ready. Right, and just let that go. Okay, so I have probably two to three tablespoons of coconut oil. Um, you can also use avocado oil. Um, but we're gonna fry up the chicken meatballs at this point to give them that nice crispy crunch. And I have a cooling rack with a paper towel underneath it for when they come off of the heat. All right, now you know your oil is hot when you throw in just a little bit of the meat and it should do this. That is not, <laughs> didn't go in the right place. All right, you see how it immediately starts to bubble like that, like these are? Now you know your oil is hot enough. I mean, you can, vent, and you can use a fancy thermometer, but you know what? People that cook just know these things. You learn them, it's like on the job training. Hear the sizzle? You want to hear the sizzle. And you don't want them touching each other because then what will happen is, as they cook, they give off steam. So then they're steamed meatballs. And you don't want that. You want crunchy meatballs on the outside, soft on the inside. So give them some room to breathe when you put them in your pan. And you know what? This is one of those things where, yes, it may take a little more time. It's a little more labor intensive, but you will be glad that you did that. Perfect. There we 
everybody's in the party now. Everybody's in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, as you can see, they shrink up in size as they cook, so that gives you a little more room where they still are not anywhere too close to each other. And uh, you just keep testing throughout. Like this was the first one that I put in. So we're gonna look and look at that. It looks good. So we're gonna drop her back in and kind of flatten her down a little bit. Like, you know, I might get the oval shape, but that's okay. I'm not going for the shape so much as I am the quality of the finished meatball. I want it to have some crunch on it. See how beautiful that looks? Ouch! Stuff bites you, I'm telling you. <laughs> Speaking of that, look at, look at, look at the... I know, don't laugh, <laughs> but I've been splashed in the face enough to know you need to go to Harbor Freight or something to get those $1.69 glasses. Save your skin! Cause that, that frying stuff, that, that spits you, and that spit burns like heck when it hits your face. And my gosh, you don't want that in your eyes. Then you just turn them over and give them a little poke down. Look how beautiful these are. Oh, and they smell so good. No, I don't want that one yet, so I'm gonna, if it comes up and it's like that, I, I want it darker. Turn it back over. They almost Perfect. look like a scallop. You know, I love fried scallop. So this almost looks like a fried scallop to me. Already, we have one experiment going on. Oh, fiber as a batter. So that's what this one is. <laughs> but I don't want to give you a verdict until we test it. Yeah, we just want to test it. I mean, that's, this is how we test new things. Don't be afraid to experiment. Yeah, there's and plenty of meatballs here. Yeah. So we can, we can lose one if it's not very good. Um, but as you can see, these are nice and ready on both sides. So I take them out, and I don't know if you want to zoom the camera over, and I just lay them on top here. Okay? But those look so yummy. Now we have the finished product, and now we're gonna do the sauce step. And we're gonna put the chilies into the hot sauce. And the, make sure you wash your hands. I know. And the, uh, chop, what do you call it, scallions. Most of them. I want to keep a couple just for the very top. Okay. And then we're going to put the sauce in a stainless bowl with all the rest of those and toss them just like they do in the restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> Pour that in your, over your meatballs. Make them saucy. Spicy and saucy. Woo! Meanwhile, I'll show you the roasted broccoli that's going to be on the side. 400 degrees for about 25 minutes with this much. And then all of that's in the sauce, and we're going to just toss it so everything gets a nice coating. And then we're going to plate it. General Chow's chicken. And if you wanted to get really fancy, you could serve this over cauliflower rice, but I would rather more broccoli. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing more broccoli. You do you. Yep. And then just as your garnish, look at that. That's just beautiful. All right, and here is the finished plate. Does that not look delicious or what? Delish. So serving size is six balls. Um, I don't know if I can eat that many. <laughs> um, and then I have six ounces of roasted broccoli. So. Enjoy, and then we did a taste test and the rolling it in oat fiber was delicious to add a little bit extra crunch on the outside. So anyways, link for the recipe will be down below. Let's go into our, our ending. Mm -hmm. Hide everything. <laughs> Once again, we have everything here. Cover everything. <laughs> like there's nothing here, we made the There's food. nothing here, we need a tablecloth. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will post the recipe link down below and KetoRewind.com and I'll see you tomorrow. I'm Jess, you're watching Keto Rewind. Bye-bye. I'm Mom, you're watching Keto Rewind. Bye-bye. <laughs>